See how it works? Anybody think you're not qualified to serve the Lord? Nobody saying yes? That's good. I'm happy to hear that. Because I'm ending with just some um, thoughts, okay, about, about how we can think about this new life. Because remember last time I talked about the cycle of death that was put into place when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. It causes this deterioration over time. It causes people to sin. It causes people to get into sexual sin and adultery and all these things because the, the temptation starts typically there's spiritual adultery happening before the actual act happens. And we can shortcut that cycle of sin. We can be accountable to one another and we can get somebody to pray with us and say, hey, there was a new person hired on my job and you know, I'm feeling some chemistry and it's not good and I don't want to give in to any of that stuff. Would you pray with me? My co connection with other believers brings me protection. But we have to avail ourselves of that and look around. You've got plenty of people here who are willing to help. So, you know, this is such beautiful language. I had to repeat it from two weeks ago. It's Song of Solomon. And he said, come away with me. I've come as you have asked to draw you to my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one. That's Jesus speaking to us as the bride. And like, look, you've been living an existence here. And yes, life is tough. We all have to deal with some really difficult things. But keep your eyes on the prize. Walk by faith. I'm going to come. There's going to be a day that you're going to be my bride and that we're going to rule and reign together for eternity. So while you're here, these light and momentary afflictions, this is what Paul said, right? These light and momentary afflictions don't have any comparison to the weight of the eternal glory that we're going to have while we rule and reign with him. So I love this. He's talking to me. Come away with me. I've come as you've asked. I'm going to draw you to my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one, the season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended. I think we should stand. I, I want to like, I want to put my foot down, right? I want to emphasize, the bondage of my barren winter has ended. It would be good to speak it into the atmosphere, say it. The bondage of my barren winter has ended. I'm not going to live in slavery to isolation and cut myself off from other people and, and the life-giving relationships that I have. And it says the season of hiding is over and gone. Yeah. Dude, that's not for today. Yeah. Look at the beautiful day we got out here. It's amazing, right? Like, be outside. Be around people. Keep the mask off when you're outside, okay? Come on. Like, you've been seeing, you see people driving down the highway alone in their car, and they got the mask on. I'm not trying to shame anybody, but you just get so used to the wrong way of thinking that you forget. Like, no, outside, you can take the mask off. It's beautiful. I don't care if people get mad at me, you know, like, some people are still hung up. Like, they're on the other side of the street and they're giving you a dirty look for being outside without a mask on. Like, you need Jesus. Oh. Hopefully, we're loving them through that and not shaming them, right? I love this. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing has arrived. And then, come on, let's receive that word. Over my life, the season of singing has arrived. I'm taking down my harp from the willow tree because God has given me a new song. Hallelujah. Now let's just make some declarations before you leave. Because I said, what was finished, right? The cycle of death was finished. Since Jesus didn't sin, death could not hold him. Because the wages of sin is death. But if you don't sin, there's no death. So death could not hold you. We sing it in that song. What a beautiful name. You have no rival. You have no equal. Death could not hold you. Hallelujah. But that same spirit is living inside me and you. Amen? So let's say it out loud. Winter has passed. Springtime has come. What has finished? Living a hopeless existence is over. Say it. Living a hopeless existence is over. God has a plan for me. Say it. God has a plan for me. I'm no longer separated from a loving father by sin. I'm no longer stumbling in the dark, without Holy Spirit's guidance, you could do it with me. No longer fall in prey to destructive behavior and self-loathing. I'm no longer an orphan living 
Woo! Why? I want to say that one again. No longer an orphan living on counterfections and gruel. You know what gruel is, right? Like, it's barely enough to keep you alive. And that's, that's what the devil gives you. He keeps you, it's like a drug dealer. He doesn't want you to take an overdose. He wants you just sick enough that you need him. But if he gives you too much, he loses the customer. That's what gruel is. It's like, yeah, there's a little nourishment in there, but why would you have that meal? Why would you go with the counterfeit when Jesus is saying, you could come to me. I'm the bread of life. I'm the water that you need. Lady at the well, you drink the water I give you, you're never going to be thirsty again. You're not going to look to other things to satisfy you. Oh, thank you, God. I'm no longer denied access to the kingdom of God and the earth. One more time. I'm no longer denied access to the kingdom of God and the earth. I'm no longer living in moral bankruptcy, destroying the lives of others. Can I just stop there for a minute? Some of us feel a lot of shame about the sin in our lives. I'm one of them that created so much wreckage in the lives of the people that I was with. I didn't know, right? I have a feeling that might be one of the thorns in the flesh that Paul is talking about, that he couldn't forget the bad decisions that he made didn't just impact him, it impacted a lot of other people. But so can we just repent of that right now and say, Lord, forgive me for any way my actions might have caused pain to other people. But I choose to forgive myself because you forgive me. Your word says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far you've removed my transgressions from me. Let's just pray that sets in somebody's heart right now. Your past is behind you. Okay? God has forgotten about it. The enemy will still bring charges against you, but you can tell him, my record has been expunged. There's no record. You have no, no charge against me legally. But remember, he doesn't have authority, but he has the power of the lie, so you've got to know the truth to counter it. All right, I'm almost done. No longer living under slavery and bondage of addictions. One more time. No longer living under the slavery and bondage of addiction. So, Lord, if anybody here is dealing with an addiction, anybody on the live stream that's watching, Lord, if they're dealing with an addiction, we ask you to be stronger than the strong man. Whoever that strong man is in their life, it's pornography, if it's whatever, eating disorders. There's so many ways the devil tries to kill us with addictions controlled substances, heroin, whatever it is, Lord, be stronger than the strong man in their lives. We ask you to break the power of that addiction through the power of your spirit in their lives and our lives. And the last one, I no longer hate myself. I know that I am lovable and that I am loved. Say it again. I no longer hate myself. I know that I am lovable and loved. Last time, I no longer hate myself. I know that I'm lovable and love. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I remember my wife, as the Lord was bringing healing into her, her heart, she would stand in front of the mirror and speak truth over herself. She would look at herself and point at herself in the mirror to break the lie. She took the truth of the word and broke the lie that had been spoken over her. And it might take a little radical behavior like that, but it's not worth staying in bondage. Amen? Could you lift your hands for me? I just want to release a prayer of blessing over you all as you go. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, and, and show favor to you in your life. That as you walk, his presence would shine through you to other people. And as you fill yourself up with the word of God, as you open your mouth, it will be God's thoughts. It will be God's words that are coming out of us. Because the pump that's driving us is not sin any longer. But it's going to be the truth of God's word right for that moment. Right in that situation. The cycle of death is broken. We walk by faith, not by what we see with our eyes, Lord, because in our faith we're pressing towards the prize of eternity with a resurrected body. I just bless your people to walk in the fullness of your power this week. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Love you all. If you guys need prayer, we just come right up that aisle. We'll have people up here at the altar to pray. If this is new to you, and you want somebody to pray with you, please come up to the altar so that we can be with you and pray.